Good morning. Is it still morning? Let me just check the time. Yes, it's still 11 a.m. Well, quarter past 11. Hello, how are you? Uh, it's been a week or two, I think, since I did this prep for the plate. For, um, yeah, for the great plate for the quarry. And I thought I'd better get onto it because um, otherwise I'll run out of time for it to go into the kiln to be fired and um, be ready for the, you know, for the fundraiser. Um, thanks to Wayne for, you know, for checking out my little promo um, post about the event and yeah, thank you for showing interest and thanks to Hannah for jumping in there and saying yeah, send them an email and check them out. So as you can see here, so this is from the other week, I have actually let it rest for a week, um, you know, just let it do its thing, dry off, it's got the plate shape. It's kind of like a paper mache setup, you know, when you like just compress it all together. So I like, you know, like I said, I, I do it this way because I don't throw plates and I wanted to do, um, I like to carve mine. And so I wanted to do a, a kind of a, from the, you know, from the clay right up to my final design, I wanted to have that happen so that, it, that I was in charge of it and that I'm um, kind of like controlling like that when it comes to my artwork um and so i like to have you know go from original design all the way to what i'm thinking of on the mock-up whatever so i'm just going to slice up some um let me get this down here so let's get that loose a bit so i can bring the tripod down here so you can see so i'm just going to clean it up uh, this is one of the plastic tools i actually bought a while back when i first got, decided to do this you know um I think it might have been 2018, 2019, take part in um, getting back into doing ceramics. So this is just to clean up my work here, um, you know, and see how it goes. What's, you know, as you can, there's some pieces here that might need to get fixed up, as you can see. Um, and some I might actually cut back on just to give me my, you know, get the um, contours I want and the shape I want around here, right? So this is, I just added some more bit of um, moisture to it, sprayed on some more water um, with my little water bottle. And that's actually from my oil, like um, oil spray, a spray oil, whatever they call it for cooking. Uh, we got that, came out in 2018, I think, and had like um, uh, parsley, not parsley, yeah, it actually had parsley and um, garlic and also had that awesome um, flavor we Indians love, which is that um, saffron oil you know and the taste of saffron rice and stuff so we bought tons of that mum and i i rang up mum and said hey mum you know they've got a whole bunch of these for dollar each how many do you want she goes i'll have 10 of each please thank you and so yeah so i just went in there and grabbed mum 10 bottles each and i got me some and i was like i'm out of it about a year later i was out and i was like oh, i wish i'd bought more you know great taste when you spray some some saffron oil onto your rice or whatever else you can actually put on your steak and instead of just olive oils and stuff like that just to give it a bit more of a lift as well as chicken and stuff the red coloring and kind of like an orangey red well saffron coloring gives it a nice little um, color to the meat especially if it's white meat like um, pork or chicken Could, um, talking to the chef here but um, yeah one of the many hats I've learned and upskilled in. Um, yeah, so as you can see, I'm just going to clean up the edges here because this is, you know, there's no point in me trying to start carving away if my, sh you know, at the plate and the shape I want is not even right from the start. So I've got to have a nice clean base. Um, I might tack on like in holes here, there are, I'll just go across and clean it right up and add in more of the, um, you know, the wet clay onto it just to patch it up, just to make sure it's nice and strong. I don't want something like this going into the kiln and then cracking up on me, because that's the most horrible thing is actually having work, having completed a work for hours and hours and then just going, having it go in the kiln because he did something incorrect at the early stages that's made a pop up. One of the things that my tutors used to teach me was never, because we used to do, um, Casting, right? Um, like um, model, model, what's that? Uh, kind of like lost, loose, lost wax, loose wax, casting. 
uh, which meant that like you put clay into plaster or into you know I mean not clay sorry wax into a uh, molded shape either plaster or um, clay I mean so plaster or yeah a plaster shape or clay yeah so now the problem was that sometimes you know if you're using the same bench and you haven't cleaned it off enough that that ends up having a bit of plaster on there and ends up in the actual clay a little tiny spot under pressure in the kiln which is the oven getting cooked up you know the clay will crack it might actually depending on the size of it, it might actually blow blow up in there into smithereens depending um, but there's also the part where you let one part dry faster than another and that might add to the crack cracking as well that's why like I had to go clay um you know I had a cover with the um, with the old let me just put this down my hands getting a bit sore because I have weaknesses do 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 you know certain things um so yeah so that sort of um you know just waste of work and um you don't want that. Yeah, my fingers are getting a bit thin there. So here's the tools I was talking about the other time that I've made. This is like, as you can see, they're felts, right? The actual felts, thick felts, right? Vivids, whatever you want to call them. And here's me taking the tent pegs, right? And they're, these are actually from, um, I was able to make four of them. And they're four different shapes. Um, they got the flat shape to carve out, dig in. You got a bit of a um, knife edge there with a the sharp carving tool cleaning up on an angle and then you get the flat with the thinner one so you can go into a thinner space and then of course you got the pointed one with just just slight uh, edge on it uh, you know thickness to it so because the next one up is this this is one of those um uh, cheapy screwdrivers i bought online but they're like very fine just pan things so you can just actually shape it around it so that's you know and then those are two plastic ones and these are usually used just used to dig, uh, clean up for a bit but yeah my homemade um ones because my hands get very tired if the you know if the handles aren't very thing and they get stuck into space because of my injury so i made my own tools because i wanted to make sure that you know i was able to um handle the work without um it hurt you know causing too much pain to my fingers and wrists and so yeah, so I can just go across and clean up. So for this one, this is better because it's kind of a wider thing. So going across, cleaning up underneath the ridge of the. Hey, thanks for watching. Um, yeah, so I'm just yeah cleaning up this plates edges before I start going to the carving mode. Okay, just want to make sure it is. I'm happy with what it is or what the shape is before I even start. So this is um, this is a. It's probably backwards. But this is the shape that I'm looking to do carve into it as as the just the, the first shape design. What I do with it is going to be a bit more than just flat cut because that's just my um, little um, what um, what is it called my starting point for this actual plate um, design because I always like to just have a little simple piece of design and then work from that and let it. And, you know let, let, let it go where it goes because it's not never always ends up the way I want it and I never stop my son from you know at a certain stage and I go well I don't like that I better cut back I just just go with it because I think when you're carving something you just have to work the design the way it is this Saturday um, I had a spare space for my um for my um podcast and narrative and I had, a, I, mean, I had a postponement and so I am um, I've been talking to the guys at um well I think it was Debbie over at um at Beyond Media which is the the company that runs Expo up I'm again an expo. I'm again convention um, events all across from uh, New Zealand, I should say. Um, and as you know, we do wows here up in 
the pop punch convention up here in Framaray. And next year we'll be doing it in Karakari. And it's quite different to what we do. And I love, I, lo I do think, um, you know, I, I just, do, you know, I think having Armageddon is such a great thing for the economy, for the, uh, for the culture, for, for everything that's going on in New Zealand in that arena, bringing these top tier people to New Zealand, showing them what's on offer. Some that might never even have, be, have thought of coming to New Zealand and have only just seen it in movies and stuff. And, you know, they bring all that money with them, bring their entourage, bring all their security, bring all their people they've got to feed, you know, and house and stuff. And I think it's amazing. That's a pretty cool thing that they do. And it's built over so many, you know, decades, you know. And um, so I got to, I've been in contact with them every kind of every now and then about, you know, having our, um, maybe promoting our comic books there and stuff in time. In the future, I actually, when I was first getting into trying to own a comic shop, I actually was there in, I think, 2011. It might have been 2011, 2012. Um, and had a booth there and stuff. And selling independent comics and stuff like that. But, um, but you know, um, it's, it's such a cool um, event. And I think it's, it's worthy of continuing forever because of what they do and what they bring and you know and so anyway so i got an email this week from um from debbie saying hey we, we're going to be promoting this you know we've got a new release of our comic book coming out would you be you know would you interested um you know do grab a hold of it the thing was that way back in 2018 as some of you may know i was i was i was doing um I was doing a radio show here on on 116 at 116 called um, the Geek Out with Malfunction or the Geek Out, you know, uh, Geek Out with Malfunction, something like that, the Geek Out Hour or whatever like that. And um, I was able to um, get some books. I was, um, you know, I got in touch with. Um, with Armageddon, I said, hey, I know you guys do make, you know, put out these comic books as well, or these graphic novels and stuff as part of what you do, you know, the comic side of things. And I said, hey, do you, um, would you, you know, do you want to send some to review? Um, and they did. And I was uh, quite excited because, you know, it can be quite expensive producing these things. And as you know, I mean, we're involved in creating comics ourselves. And currently we have like about six on the go was it five i think six is about to come and you know all genres and stuff for all ages and stuff and so i was you know it's quite excited to see that come in and i talked about it on, on the radio and we actually when we did our little um when we did put out a um you know a magazine online magazine which was supposed to get printed but thanks to COVID, it didn't um or we didn't end up doing it that way, but we're hoping next year we can do it, produce it somehow, grab some money somewhere to fund it. And, um, but, yeah, so at the end of it, we were like, um, you know, I got I got my um, editor, head writer, um, Ayla Miller, to basically, um, to actually talk to them, I think it was, to talk about the books and stuff, or do a review on it. And that was pretty cool, I think. The thing is, I, I just, I'm very ex um, interested in promoting local stuff, even if it's, it comes from somebody with a big name attached to it, it doesn't really matter, it's still creating and showing that we, as Kiwis, are, in, are involved in creating comics, or manga, or whatever it is, or animation, but we need, you know, we need to show the world that we are, are doing this stuff. And so, you know, so I was like, yeah, let's put this in there. You know, there's also Adrian Kennard, who does um, Earth's End. Um, Ayla did an interview with him. And that's in the magazine. Hopefully it'll be coming out next year. Just talking about him. Of course, the magazine's like almost like three years old, um, two years old now, something like that, or three years old. But I mean, you know, it's still relevant, you know, what, we, what they talk about, because these are the guys that are actually pioneers uh, of you know, of the arts, of, of pop culture in New Zealand and stuff. And so, you know, I think it's a, 
it's a really cool symbiosis to see those guys to um, be able to do all that at the same time be part of something what we're doing saying you know we're putting out a magazine we'd like to have you part of us as well because i think you need that at this low end we don't have the billions of dollars that other companies would have to promote their work you know um, if you look at any kiwi creator they're not rich or something like that they're just doing what they can to uh, what, what their passions are to do it and it's just them like us we don't have all that money to just go hey we can put this out into this and then we'll sell the rights to a movie and we'll do this and we'll do that and it's like no you can't do that because at the moment you don't have all that money so what you got to do is just work with others to help you know each other get up there and i think uh, you know we just need to create avenues because i believe in making sure that when i when i you know when my time's up when i've stepped down from all the silly stuff that i'm doing and i consider it silly because i don't take it seriously um i take it seriously as seriously as it can be but not put myself in the sense of like oh look at what i'm doing it's more like one more thing to do before i you know stop doing things and i think that's the um, that's how i look at everything i do it's just like it's just another thing uh, to have fun at just like this this is another thing to have fun at being involved with because i want to see this here bring some more um you know some more eyes especially from people that i'm in, you know that are in my circle to bring support to um to our community you know to say hey look you know um be involved in our community this way you know if you're doing comic books you can do a you know a page or something you know or do a poster for it and just say it's something that has to do with plates or circles or whatever i don't know i think the brief is whatever the brief is and um that, that they set up that hannah and and jared and them at the quarry set up for this event you know because it's a, it's an important part of what we do in our community is supporting our community so because uh, once a week i go out shopping with jason who carries my groceries for me right a friend of mine you know the cfo of um plunge enterprises and once a week i get to offload all my thinking of my um you know desires my future thoughts what i think about what we could do what could you know how we could benefit be of benefit to the community and i was you know we're talking about um i just lost my train of thought where was i um excuse me Yeah, I think I've just lost my train of thought, sorry. Too much going on in his head. Um, yeah, and so just talking about, you know, what I'm, you know, what I like to see happen, you know, and I talk, and I'm a big mouth, and I just consider myself the big mouth, right? I'm the person who basically just talks a lot of stuff and actually doesn't keep it to himself. In that sense that I talk about, hey, this is what I'm going to see, this is what I think is, would be workable, uh, that could be beneficial beneficial and this is what we can do to better our community uh for the future and like you said you know if i'm not going to always be here to be the big mouth somebody else has, will have to step up and be the big mouth and everybody has their own way of you know communicating and i'm i'm the guy who just talks uh and sometimes i get us I, <laughs> I need to listen um to have someone listen to me and tell me uh-huh not nah, not nah, not that this maybe consider that and that's a cool thing i mean i'm learning all the time because that's why i like talking to people because i think you know having these podcasts and stuff it helps me to see uh, get a bigger picture sometimes i'm not seeing things um the way i should and it should you know i should pay more attention to certain things and i don't because i'm too busy thinking about two three steps ahead and those will be with me or you know next to me are actually going what's going on i don't understand what you're trying to say or i haven't you haven't communicated properly and i think that that's my own fault sometimes but I, the other side is that you know um you can try as hard to explain to people what you're trying to do but sometimes it's just not gonna work right it doesn't always go the way you want and some people just won't get it and some people will and you'll find that those who get it will stick it out with you even though if you're stupid and silly and making you know <laughs> not getting your point across properly but 
you know, they're able to see that, hey, you know, I see what you're trying to, and I'll just stick with it to make sure that we, you know, we uh, get that point that you're trying to make, or whatever it is, I don't know. I'm just talking up my head most of the time. But um, I think the cool thing is that we have a community in Whangarei that's very creative, and I like seeing and supporting the creativity. And the way I can see supporting that is just bringing them, bringing people together. And I think I've seen that very much so in the last four, last past three and a half years that we've done, um, you know, the punch convention. But even before that, if you, you know, if you guys remember, like I was mentioning earlier, I was, you know, I was doing this already on 116 at on the bigger radio station, I was bringing people together, showing people that there's musicians in our community, there are weavers in our community, you know, that need support, that there are, you know, that are artists in our community that need support, there are convention runners that need support. Because if you if, if we don't have the support to do things that people, are, um, you know, like myself and others, I'm just amongst one of the many, right, that are doing things in the community each year, right? Um, all the time some you know and if they don't get the support they'll get this hidden and they'll stop and the problem then arises that in the future when the new ones come up they'll look at the past and say well they didn't get support so i'll probably won't get support either so there's this negativity that goes continues on so the best way to to build up a good good positive community is support at whatever age group whatever level that people have interest in what we're doing like pop culture or arts that you support that and i support that you know um and this week i put up you know we've, we've spent so much money you know people say that you know what's problems all about and i said well it's basically for the community right we raise money and we spend it on the community you know i um we don't you know minimal amount comes to us uh money that we raise ourselves for ourselves selling products that comes to us but when we um we raise funding and stuff that goes straight to the convention um and people involved with the convention i mean in the past we actually paid people to speak at the convention and um you know because they, they were artists they had you know they need, they need support so i was like okay would you like to come and speak i like what you guys are doing um you guys have you know you guys either have a platform or you don't, it doesn't matter, but I like to see your career baby by supported by us. And so, you know, so we supported that. We pay people $50 to speak or $55 or whatever to speak for half an hour, you know, that's pretty good in my books, you know, and, um, but then again, a couple of years later, I got to speak uh, at another, um, you know, at a tech week and I got supported for that, you know, and, you know, Jason and I were there and that money just went straight into the business because um, I spoke as a person from the business, you know, and I think this is the cool thing about what we do as creatives is that we support each other by doing things like that, that you don't know what the future holds, you don't know when you will be in need, um, and so you give when you can, and you support when you can, and that support, you know, will come back somehow, somewhere, maybe not in the way you think, and that's why I'm always open to making sure that new new people are out there creating stuff and that they're creating diverse stuff. There's no point doing the same thing, you know, um, because if you're doing the same thing, it gets boring and people find it boring and they don't want to support it. But if you do new things, people will give it a go. I mean, like if you look at what we did with Plunge, right? When we were doing Plunge, the first year right, was the hardest. It was, we only had a hundred people turn up. Second year was pretty good. I felt good and confident. Third year I was better. You know, with some second was it like 2020, 2021? Yeah, 2020 like COVID hit, right? So I was okay with it. It wasn't too tough. 2021 I was quite disheartened because I wasn't sure what was going to happen because there was so much ups and downs going into that. Uh, and then this year I was really gutted because I thought they were just going to close off the country straight or forever because it just felt that way. And I just, you know, I got really emotional as some of you might have seen the video, you know, and it, because I am an emotion person and I don't think humans, you know, we're, we're 
we're humans are emotional. And I think sometimes um, that comes out in a negative way and sometimes comes out in a positive way. And it's, and I think the first best way I find to do it in a positive way is to bring it out of my art and my creativity. And that, you know, that allows for a bit of, um, a bit of good things to come out of something negative. Um, one of the other things um, I think that's pretty cool. Let me see if I can bring this wider. No. Let me just pop that back a bit. Yeah. I think you get to see me. All right. Not that long. I've been banging about it just that I think just looking at a plate's kind of boring, right? <laughs> I mean, not like a piece of clay, whatever, kind of boring. All right, so this looks kind of like shape. I think it's a bit weird up here, so I might clean that up a bit. You can probably see it looks a bit wonky up there. It might be a wonky plate because, of course, I don't expect it to be perfect because it's hand-built, which is quite different to having something, you know, having something that's just come out of a machine. And that's a great thing about art, right? It's not supposed to be machinery. There we go, yep. Just about right. I think there's some extra pieces to somewhere around. Right? There it is. Hopefully, not too much. Yeah, once I've done this, I'll just give it a bit more. A bit more of a um, wetness to it. I spray on some water with my little makeshift <laughs> spray can, water spray can, whatever you want to call it. Um, and we'll go from there. I think, I think that's about right. There's some thin parts, but I think it should be about right. Right, let's get that out of there. Now, Let's get these bumps out of there. I just I don't like it too bumpy, but I don't want it too um, machine looking. I still want people to know that it's, it's made by my hands, made by humans, by my own two hands. I can't remember the name of this singer, but um, I can heal the world. With my own two hands. And that's a cool, that is actually a good thing because I think that saying, I think art can heal the world, creativity can heal the world. If you get people focused from the negative onto the positive, you can heal the world. I think we're too too consumed by um, negativity because it sells. Bad news sells more, you know, entertainment and stuff. You know? We get that way, I guess. The gossip pounds. We want to know the bad things happening in people's lives rather than the good things happening in people's lives. And um, that's what I love about doing the podcast is because, it, and, and when I was doing the radio, it's, what's the good things happening in people's lives? What's the good thing that's happening in the community? Right? I just want to make, like, if I'm putting out any posts, I need to like, make sure that at least three of those are good po good, good stuff. As much as I like trolling and stuff, I still want to make sure that at least three are, three are good things. Uh, or something positive. Or two, at least something more than that one, right? To balance it out. Almost there. Before I start the carving process. All right, I think this is about all right. Let's um, just go through it once more. I think that's a bit thick there. I'm not going to try. Actually, I might leave that. I might be able to carve into that. So this is about. You can see this is like 
very thin. It's like, a, I mean, normal dinner plate thickness. So, you know, the other thing I've got to do is like carve a little thing here. So it's got a bit of a little, um, uh, what it's called, like, so it's got a bit of a roundness. So you've got that ridge so that you have it normal in place. You know, kind of like that. So it sits above the um, base. Otherwise, it'll just go flat. And, and that can often crack in the middle here. It'll start splitting over here because there's nothing there to hold it up. So I'm going to go with that first. And we'll start with a little round piece in the middle. Just make sure my measurements are right here. Well, not measurements as such. As you can see, I have a toothbrush here. Very, very, um, very professional here. And that brush is just to, don't even want to really go to center, but I'll try to keep it as, actually, it might work it this way. Is that what it's just be called? I can't remember what these things are called. Yeah, so it's that way a bit more. Perfect. I think that's perfect. Should give me enough of a. Um, line around. I might have to fill that up so it's not got a hole in the middle of your plate. Okay. Do a little right. Let's get into the carving. So as you can see here, that's me. I'll probably fill that hole up later, but that's me just trying to put a little um, ridge on it as part of this. Make it look like that, so it doesn't get too flat in the middle because the flat will split it. So I'm just going to quickly. Clean that up with my handmade tools. Actually, which one would be better? See, that's my left handed one, so that's going to be a bit of a problem. All right, let's. My hand's fingers are playing up because this is too thin of a handle on it. And that's why I have these homemade thick, thick um, handle things. Which, you know, that's just not, that's just too much. And there on the fingers. Don't want to go too deep with this because my plate is quite thin. I just want to give it enough of a ridge so that um, that it's not flat. You can see that. Let me just bring that down a bit. The cool thing is, even though I've left this plate like this for a week, it's perfectly, with the glad wrap, it's the perfect um, wetness or softness uh, and dryness, like they would say, like, you know, that I can carve it at. There is not, it's not too dry and it's not too wet. So it's perfectly for doing this right now. And of course, I'm not trying to get a perfect line all the way around. I just want it to be enough there just to be able to lift it off the ground. And then I'll carve in the middle here. I find doing these um, these plates kind of therapeutic because um, you know it's just before the convention. It's hands-on work. I mean, I'm doing all these designs on the computer and stuff for the convention and stuff. But I mean, and on the comics we're doing. But this is just so 3D. It's like you know I've got I'm here um, with hands-on. You know. 
touching um, touching the clay, <laughs> working on every little piece of it from the clay down up, you know, every little thing, 3D, you know. So it's different to all the digital work I do, design work I do, um, you know, all the computer work I'm doing. So it's kind of feels really cool going into each event, having gone through, you know, done this. <laughs> totally opposite of what I do every every day year round and then I get to do this take this time out to actually do something totally different to all of that okay so let's get this round part good sure it would be nice if I just had something to lift it up I just put it back in the plate nope that won't work it's got to go that way. Mm. No, I think it would be much of a better balance if it's just like that. doesn't take that long, maybe 10 minutes, 10, 15 minutes, all up to get the shape um, right. And really it's, um, might just do the out and then come back into the middle after I've carved it. But the cool thing is, and just in case, right, it's always got to have a backup plan. So if, if this doesn't, you know, if, you know, God forbid this doesn't, you know, go, go to plan, I can grab another piece of clay and make another one. Just thought of something that might be a bit, in, bit more interesting to go with this. Well, let's see. I'll put something a bit more exciting to this. Uh, the reason it's, this one's called Pariseo is because of the upcoming comic book. We've got, with um, like last year, we had the Incredible coming out. This year we've got a new Incredible comic coming out, uh, which is called Rise and Fall. Uh, oh no, sorry, which is called um, Drawing of the Five. And uh, we had a new artist on it, so I was like, it'd be cool to like do a do a sister um, plate to the one I did last year, and Credit Girl being, you know, last year's one, and this year we're doing Parasea, and that'll be totally, you know, it'll be cool, kind of like a twin to this, which is kind of like what the story's about, but, um, you know, it is what it is, and I don't want to spoil what I'm doing with the comic books, but this, and that won't be out until September, so, you know, it's way after plunge this year, but it'll be, hopefully it'll be here for next, um, you know, we'll have it all printed up and ready by next um, plunge, which is the Kerikeri one in February. And that's on the fourth, fourth of fourth of February next year, and that's going to be quite different. We we're focusing on art there. I mean, with everything else, but we each year we try to focus on something different, because by focusing on something different, it brings um, brings different um, interested parties to the you know to the event. Like I mean, you know, last year was about education um, and putting engine room at forefront. You know digital media and stuff and this year it's cosplay and putting that with the forefront fabric design design work you know stuff like that involved in gaming you know because that's part of um 
you know, cosplay as well. So you got movies, TV, you got gaming, video games, t tabletop games, you know, comic books, manga, all that. Getting dressed up in your favorite characters from favorite things, anime or manga, you know, or comic book. And I just love the fact that we, you know, we've had so much interest this year from different parties compared to what we had in the previous year. Like, I mean, you know, people who are doing tattoos and stuff are interested, you know, um, people who are baking cakes, or well, have a cake shop or something are interested, you know, people who are selling toys are interested. But that just helps to pay the bills, as they say, or bring in the punters, right? <laughs> As Hamish likes to say, Hamish from um, Two Core Five Prince likes to say, and that's something you know that's pretty cool as well because Hamish, you know, does a lot of awesome work with the um, with the trust there with the Two Core Five Print and the people there. You know, they do a lot of amazing creativity, um, creative work, and keeping it you know keeping it um, hands on and basic hand printing and stuff like that, books, posters, you know. That's very cool. And I'm glad we've had them every year. And have had that support. And in turn, we support them by bringing them back in every year. Um, because they're community groups. So community groups get them free. And so, yeah. And it's just just such a cool thing having all these different people involved in the community involved with what we do. Because it just showcases what's available for people who aren't aware of that's happening, that's available there in the community. <laughs> I don't want to go too deep on this because this is um, this whole um, this whole um, plate isn't too deep and plus I'm going to be carving on the other side of this as well so because I'm carving on the other side I don't want to take too much away from it because I'm in case I go too deep on the other side depending because I like to layer my carving and so it looks three-dimensional and so because of that if I go too deep here it means that I can't go too deep on the other side bit of a wider blade on this Different tool for different jobs, as they say. We'll have to be careful so I don't go too deep. This is the thing about these things. If you just, um, you know, oh, clay, clay is the best tool, best thing if you screw up, right? You know, when you, it's an art form, right? I mean, it's a material to use, or medium, as they call it, because you can always go back and pick it up with a piece of clay wet a piece of clay and stick it in there and that's one of the joys of working with clay is like you go, oh there's a hole there all right let's just wet up some slurry and chuck it in there you know and that'll fix it when it dries up it'll be just like it wasn't even there before um so yeah that's one of the cool things with working with clay with ceramics you know one of the things that i you know i learned to appreciate very early you know with as clay you know, was that um, in ceramics? Was that my um, tutors, right? They got um, they they're the ones who actually built Burning Issues Gallery in the waterfront there. All my floor tutors did that. You know, uh, was that you know uh, Chris Carey? I think he's overseas now. Uh, I think he started, if I'm not correct, but I think he started Creative Northland, the um, that um, foundation. I mean, the arts arts fund funding body you know um, he said you know you realize that they use clay bricks uh, um, in, the, in the rockets that fly to the moon or such you know fly to space and I said no I didn't you know and he was telling the whole class that and I thought that was pretty interesting and I thought wow that's pretty awesome to know that something like this mud right basically mud from earth helps to take um you know rockets into space 
you know, that Elon Musk stuff kind of, you know, level. And this is like being learned that like 30 odd years ago and appreciating that 30 years ago, just like glass, you know, sand, you know, we have such amazing things, natural things that we can use for so many different high, high quality stuff. I mean, isn't this through, um, clay that they use for um, microchips and stuff like that? Because it can endure so much heat. And that's in phones. So we actually carry around a piece of clay, I guess. I might be incorrect there. I might have to check it out. But, you know, we carry around a bit of clay with us. You know, a bit of mud. In our, micro, uh, in our front phones every day. In our pockets. So when people go, oh, it's just pottery and stuff. What is, you know. You just go, look, man. You got one in your pocket right now. Appreciate it for what it is. And somebody had to figure out that that thing there, you know, that this piece of mud has a dense um, heat density, whatever they call it. I'm not too smart in that sort of technical stuff. But, um, you know, that they use it to help you run your phone and your computers. Otherwise, we wouldn't have phones and computers. They might have used some other stuff for it, but I mean, those chips, you know, and the sad part of it is that they use children to dig them up rather than um, paying for those places, you know, for what the value is. They keep all those poor, um, you know, those countries poor by not paying them what they're worth for the products they rip out of the, rip out of those, um, those grounds, those resources from those countries. You know, it's like the West thinks that everything that's in somebody, you know, in a third world country belongs to them. So because they have the power structure and all that, they're able to get away with doing some stuff like that. But that's, that's just one side of things. Anyway, so I've almost done the outer thing of this plate. Usually when I say I'm almost done, no, it's not. <laughs> I usually find something else is there. But um, let's see, I think we're almost there at this point. I think the weighting is right. The lift there is about right. So you can just see. It's about a millimeter or two. And that should be enough for this plate to allow for the heat to not, you know, directly hit that flat space because that'll, if it's not there, then it'll just crack my plate and that's the last thing I want after having done all this work on it which at the moment doesn't look like much but there will be a lot of work being done to this plate soonish once I get it right to the shape I want basically come off on an angle here so I'm trying to round it off so it's actually even I couldn't see it was on an angle until I lifted it up like I said I'll, whenever I think I've almost finished I've actually not finished because <laughs> I realize there's something else that I need to work on but um yeah so if I get this base right you know like what happens is when the, when it's flat the kiln hits it hard, like from the top, it'll be something like this, it'll hit it hard, and the heat will hit it hard really there, and the force of it, and the temperature of it will crack it, because there's nothing, for, nowhere for it to go, so what, that's why they always have this at the bottom, it's not there because to make it look nice, it's there to make it so that it doesn't crack, so that's what I have to do here, is to, um, you know, even it out, and give it a bit of a, a, um, a lift to it, the legs as they say, put some legs on this plate or do they actually say that I can't remember I've forgotten a third of the uh, fourth of the things so I probably know or a quarter of the things yeah I've probably forgotten a quarter of the things I'm supposed to know over the years too many head injuries as I keep telling people and if I make mistakes that's because of that or if I can't remember something it's because of too many head injuries 
they all they all kind of catch up on you over time sadly enough you got to protect your neck as they say well, in my case protect my head getting beaten up concussed um falling on it from um off a what is it off a bike going head first into the concrete coming off a skateboard head first into concrete <laughs> uh coming off a train jumping off a train head first into stones or rocks um what else was there i think there's one more there oh yeah as a kid child six five-year-old running and then falling onto a, tripping and falling onto a rock um you know all these things that happen um banging into someone and getting concussed and the other person getting airlifted uh, you know because they got knocked out but i was okay yeah all that silly stuff um, well, I almost think that I'm prone for accidents but no it's not like I went out of my way looking for that <laughs> things just happen at a time you just you know just taking risks oh <sighs> Hopefully it's not too much of a long video. I'm just like <laughs> doing this at my own pace because I don't want to go too fast because I might not, you know, it might get get dry too fast. It's starting to get dry actually. Just by holding here, I can see it's gotten drier compared to what it was before. But that's also allowing me to take a bit more off than than if it was wet. But that also means that by taking more off. It's chunks coming up like that here, you know, which I just took my eyes off and I realized I just took a chunk off that wasn't shouldn't be coming off like this, but I'm going to be able to fix it by just putting a bit of slurry on, wet slurry. Wet slurry is basically it's just, you know, if you're, you know, if you've done pottery or clay before, you just know it's just a piece of just wetting clay, you know, and just stick it in there like a paste and um, making sure you know it doesn't get become a patch or something like that but fixes it okay is that all right are you ready are you ready for a good time This one's got a, this is this one's pretty cool because like it's got a bit of like you can see it's got a hook on it and the hook allows me to go around around the plate's edge at the bottom here and take off the, the roundness a bit more so it's a bit more flatter. You know, just gotta be careful and not be too silly with it or too loose, otherwise it might too take too much. Like whenever I let my um <laughs> get myself a bit distracted, I end up taking a chunk out, and I just vacuumed yesterday, and I want to have to vacuum again because <laughs> I want to end up with these pieces of clay on the floor. It's very clean, and now it's got bits and pieces of clay on the floor. It's good carpet though; it's pretty. It's heavy duty industrial carpet, so it doesn't get yeah. It just comes right off. Yeah, I think 
safe enough with it outside. So I will now give it a bit more of a spray. Where is that water gone? Yes, it's got a bit of oil on it, so it's not lining with. As you can see, I can like, because it's wet, I can shape it and fill up those little holes. that I accidentally put up there and the holes would disappear. And because it got dry because of my hand and the heat from my hand working on it and it's not being covered by the thing, it's gotten dry quite fast and it's drying quite fast as I do this. So I'm just gonna make sure that there's little pits that have been, you know, clay pits. Um, stone steps in here don't keep leave holes so I'm going to smooth it out but you can see where I've gone high and where I've gone low so it's need to even it out look at that it's come out really cool because it's wet now it's come out really nicely I mean I mean when I'm carving it up in the depth and stuff, so it's come level up quite cool. If you're watching, thank you for watching. Um, you know. Hopefully, I'm not boring you to death. Um, while you watch this, it's, you know, I'm just talking. What, you know, to keep this interesting. Otherwise, you're just watching me do this and there'd be nothing to, you know, nothing of interest. Apart from just watching someone just, you know, work this plate, piece of mud. Alright, so as I was saying about this metal part here, right, so the way I was going to like say that this is how I fix it, I just go slurry, put it in there, dig it in, force, force it in, and that way you don't notice there's, you know, it's been there, but the other thing I just realized is that I'm going to be cut, cutting that up as well, but, but, I'll be fancy, I might do another ring in the middle because I want to make sure it looks, you know, I'm not just making a, making a boring looking plate. I might do a little middle piece as well. Because it is a piece of art, you know, if you get the, you know, who buys it, they can use it for putting their, you know, food on it, or just use it to put fruit or whatever on this, on the middle of the table, or put it on the wall. I mean, you know, it is what it is. And what you do with it is up to you. Okay, I might make it a bit wider. No, it's too wide. That's the right that what it will do. Okay, let's do this right. So measuring because I can't see through this. Yep, that's there, that's there. Yeah, it's about right. It's the right size too. So I'm gonna leave that middle part. What you call it? Got a bit too deep. I think a couple of mils would be enough for this one. Right. You see, another ring in the middle. Right, so I can easily dig this one out because it's not too much of a hassle. Oh, I just realized as well, I left it so I can actually make the, you know, what do they call it, stretch out or lay out depending where I'm doing it. But um, depending how much so my hand gets because sometimes, you know, it can get a bit stiff because of the injury to my wrist and the fingers. 
because I had my tendons sliced accidentally a few years back and um, well two decades ago and they still hurt um, they never came right um, and because I was too forceful and I don't really go through do the proper I mean not too forceful I was impatient I should say and I didn't go through the proper I did as much as I could um, you know mess whatever they're supposed to do, therapy to get it right but you know I wanted to use my hands as they say you know and I don't want to wait around for it and so I didn't spend as much time and my impatient has caused continual pain over the years So I've had to create my own tools, create, you know, figure out how, what's going to work best for me when I'm using the tools and when to stop and when to change. Because you don't want to, you know, you don't want to make art if you're in pain because it's just, you just don't get annoyed with what you're doing and annoyance, pain always causes annoyance. And if you haven't learned to figure out how to deal with that, you end up taking it on other people and that's not a cool thing. It's kind of like trauma. There's people who like to, you know, who haven't dealt with their own trauma. And, um, and because they haven't, they end up using that. Sometimes as a crutch to get their way or, or worse, they go, um, you know, they keep it all to themselves without being therapy and stuff. And so, and, then, and that causes long term effects because not dealing with it means that it remains in there, it doesn't go away, it just gets worse and worse. And one day it just crashes out, breaks out, and it causes everybody else problems as well as yourself. And that's all from just my injury. Damn it. <laughs> Hope I'm not oversharing. But yeah, I've had a few injuries over the years. A few traumatic experiences. But I'm always keen to see people. Uh, you know, the only time I like to share is I like to see people find healing so that they don't end up causing it to other people. I've had people use their own, you know, trauma to make my life miserable. Not even trauma, just conflict in their lives to make my, stuff, my life miserable over the past couple of years. You know, and I think that's not good for anybody and not good for society at large. Because you end up hurting other people that you don't mean to hurt. Now, oh, that's why. I have this big huge brush for to just get rid of that. So this is around about two, two or three. Three mil, maybe two, two mil deep. Let's see there. All right, that's just that I'm not taking away too much clay from this actual piece because I like to have a fair amount of, you know, amount of material I should say on this actual piece I think I've, I'm working on a piece called, um, which is rugby balls um, that I've been working on for about three four years now and I'll probably be working on it for another seven years <laughs> by the time I actually end up having the time to free it up I'm hoping that by bringing on new people onto uh, onto Plunge Enterprises, I'll be able to free myself from, you know, that sort of work. I mean, free myself 
some time so I can free have time to do that because it's, that the rugby ball takes weeks and weeks to make one up depending on where it wants to go because I don't actually pre-design I have a couple of ideas but like this one here like a simple little design like this that's gonna you know, that's gonna be something more once I'm finished right so that's there now for the outside compass there's no compass That's it for now for this one because it's going to get boring for you guys because I've, I'm out of words to say for today. <laughs> uh, I think that's my 2,000 words or whatever they say. Um, and I'll finish this bit, bit off and I'll probably leave it and then come back and carve it tomorrow. Thank you for watching. Okay, down.